Hello, my name is Marco Bela and welcome to another 5-Minute Friday. Today I think we have two questions and to start right away, let's start with a question from Kevin Florence. The question is, what are the top used frameworks slash tools slash libraries in Java, at least in the web industry? And I'm assuming you mean web frameworks, not just every framework that any business out there uses. Is JSF still a thing? Is GeoWit still alive? What happens to those frameworks? Now, I think there's a certain divide. There's a divide of what you read online, uh, the newest trends, whatever you're trying should be using, and then what boring, good old business enterprises are actually using. And you'll find that uh, there's a ton of old legacy applications with JSF, with GeoWit still alive, even self-written frameworks, web frameworks. I've seen it a ton of times that companies have old legacy software, never updated the software and have their own web framework. So even though I think both frameworks haven't had a release in the past year or two, you will still find them out there in the wild. Number two is, I think it depends a bit on uh, two more things actually. So it depends a bit, is your company more into server-side rendering? So are you gonna use something like Wicked? Are you gonna use something like Spring, uh, Spring Webflow? Or more into front-end rendering? So you have your REST services on the back-end supplying JSON to your front-end, to your JavaScript framework, Angular, React, and even more modern choices. So it depends on the company. I would also say, even though it sounds a bit silly, it depends on the continent, because I think there's different trends in Europe, in America, in Africa, wherever you are. And I find it very hard to believe these uh, polls online where someone, some company, just polls for all these web frameworks out there and uh, they have them the perfect numbers, what is the top used framework in the world. I don't think it works that way. Sure, it gives you some sort of a trajectory, but uh, it's dependent on too many factors and too many variables. But in the end, what happens to those frameworks? I guess they are in maintenance mode. Sometimes they still get fixes. But other than that, um, enjoy it when you encounter a legacy project with a really old web framework like Struts1. These are also still around and um, yes, enjoy. Okay, question number two from Reddit. What skills do companies expect from Java developers in 2019? It's a very interesting question because again, I think there's a big divide. You have the divide of whatever your job description says, whatever happens in your job interview where you get these random algorithm questions. And then third, what your actual job looks like. Now, when you exclude greenfield development in small teams and smaller companies where you can do whatever you want, you're likely to just work on an existing project, maintain it, extend it somehow, but it's going to be a legacy project. And legacy always has a, like some sort of a bad connotation with it, but I just mean it neutral. Now, the thing is, whenever you work on such a project, it's not like you're coming into that project and suddenly inventing 500 different ways of um, doing stuff. More likely, you're gonna copy whatever someone else did before you and try to adjust it a bit so that it kind of works. Like database access, you're just gonna copy a DAO, look, off, look at how they do it, and it might be some XML string queries in a Hibernate file, really old. It's not like you're gonna come in and change everything or just upgrade everything. Uh, to your liking. And it sounds a bit sad, but a lot of development is just copying. For a lot of people, developers is just copying whatever someone else did and just trying to make it work. They need a template, and without a template, they're kind of lost. So um, that is just my view of reality. What I think what companies do expect, however, is you can take a business requirement to a developer. And now it's not just technological skills, it's also business skills. How can you, can you talk to your business owner, to your product owner, whatever, and talk with them, talk them through the requirement on the technical side? Can you 
build the requirement from start to finish? Can you think of all the edge cases, not just happy paths, but edge cases? And can you communicate with your team? So a whole lot of things that make up a good developer. All right, now it's already 20 seconds past five minutes. I guess that's it for today. If you have any questions, as always, reply to this video, send them to my email address, which you'll find below as well, and then see you next week.